I think that as users of public land, it's our responsibility to know the history of the land and the people who have stewarded that land since time immemorial and who continue to do so. Uh, the public land that we enjoy today became public through theft, broken treaties, and the forced removal of Native people on the part of the United States. Um, and one of the goals of this project and of Evergreen Gravel Racing as a whole is to build and foster relationships between you know, the adventure cycling community and our peers and neighbors that we share space with. Um, so that's what I set out to do. And when I was looking at maps, um, the one area that I kept coming back to was the Dark Divide. Do I just start talking whenever? Or are you guys ready? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, uh, how it tubes to love and how to hell to all degree. Uh, and that's thank you and good day to all of you. Uh, my name is Chris Peters and I'm a citizen of the Squaxin Island tribe and I serve the Squaxin people as their council chair. We as Squaxins, uh, we are a unique indigenous people uh, who have been living uh, in clans in the South Salish Sea, Puget Sound area uh, since time immemorial. And we have our, our unique customs and traditions, um, our own way of governance, governance systems, we, for the longest time, you know, I think about how, you know, a lot of people looked at tribal people as uncivilized or savages. Uh, the reality is we had to figure it out. Um, we were very civilized. In fact, that we worked in unison with the surrounding environment uh, as one. And we would have continued to live that way for another 10,000 years. Uh, we're on the Chehalis Western Trail, south of Olympia, <laughs> heading to Yelm. Uh, this is sort of the transport stage of getting out of town and avoiding some of the busy roads. I'm a little undertrained. My legs are feeling maybe a little heavy, but the weather's nice, it's not too hot. The crew's good, the bike feels good. Feeling good? Yeah, I mean, I'm feeling good. I feel like I brought way too much shit. Uh, it's definitely something I don't notice until I'm coasting, and I'm like, why am I going so much faster than everyone else? And I'm like, oh yeah, got a lot of stuff in here. I don't know. I feel like these are the delightful cruisy miles, and I'm just trying to enjoy them. Uh, I sent little reminders on my Wahoo to. Uh eating and drinking so my goal is to just kind of get used to doing that and I don't know just take in the light path Back in the day, we didn't look at it as our land. It wasn't our land. It wasn't anybody's land. It was it was the, the land, right? And again, it, it reiterating, we worked in unison. And there was this, we weren't better than. The land wasn't a resource to us. We were all together in it in, as one. Unfortunately, that's not the way it is in today's society. Today's society, everything is a resource for us, and for, for us as humans. If we don't put things in place, there are those who are going to use it until it goes away or destroys it. I think we're here to witness, man. I think that like, this like heartbrokenness and disgust, you know, about seeing this and experiencing it. And, uh, and like, I think that's, a, that's necessary, you know? Cause it's like, it's motivating, kind of a, 
real thing that nurtures our love for and willingness to show up for this land, you know? Hi guys. Hi. Is it a hill this way? Yeah. Okay. So we're climbing up in the LB Hills State Forest. Uh, we're gonna go up and over, and this will drop us down into Ashford. Um, this is our first off-road section. Right now it's pretty dry and dusty, pretty chunky. Uh, but it's really nice, feeling good. I am a huge proponent for recreation. I think we're, but we're missing uh, an opportunity here. Um, the state, the federal government, the tribes. We really are. Uh, recreation can be something, I'm an outdoor enthusiast, and I believe most people who recreate outside, uh, for instance, a cycling community, are outdoor enthusiasts as well. And I believe most of them are also stewards and respect the land. The reason why they're out there is because they have that feeling, they have that connection. I think we could use this as an opportunity, really, um, to educate. There's nowhere else I'd rather be, you know? It's like what this whole kind of thing is about to me. Man, what the fuck? Nice <laughs> 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 I don't know. Why. Nowhere in the world are you able to ride a gravel race. Like that. <laughs> this view. Right here. You're all like, Eric's gonna lose his shit. <laughs> yeah, I just fucked. Sorry, give me a second. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> We've only been waiting all day can get into this like flow state and headspace where like particularly when you're talking about like trail or kind of like chunky gravel riding where it's just you and the trail or the road that you're on and that's kind of all you're thinking about and to have that like level of like singular focus and like flow is like such an amazing experience. Um, so I think that's what I look forward to. And then I think about like when I felt like most childlike as like an adult, it's like when you're just like flying down a hill, like on your bike or like, like riding over some bumps on a trail. It's like reminiscent of just like being totally free with your body, like when you were a kid. Um, and I think there's just like so much joy in that. My, yeah. <laughs> my plan at this point yeah. is to like use it as my camp shirt oh, okay. until wow, like to keep it as like a clean thing. Yeah. Because it feels like nice to have something to put on. Like. Totally. Come here, Gus. Gus. Right here. Come on. Hey. We're not going anywhere. Right here. Sit. 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 My name's John O'Brien. I'm a member of the Cowlitz Indian tribe. My mother and her mother before her were all um, descendants of this Kwaklaut family. I, I looked at, at your, that map and you actually go right by my house. Oh really? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Pretty good. I, I guess I, like I said, I knew I was Indian, but what that meant to me was I, I wasn't really sure. I mean, I grew up on a cattle ranch. I wanted to be a cowboy. When I 
went to ride my horse. It, I didn't like a saddle, you know. I liked to ride bareback. And I can remember my mother, she, she said, I think it's time for you to go up on the hill. And I'm like, I didn't know what that meant. And she said, well, you need to pick some things. She says, and just what, what you need to survive for a, a few days. I gathered up my things and rolled them up in a blanket and tied it on the back of my saddle and, and off I went. And she says, we'll see you in a few days. I'm like, you mean I can be gone as long as I want? I, I didn't realize it at the time, you know, but she was sending me on, a, on my, my vision quest or, you know, sending me out to become a man. And I survived out there catching fish and picking berries. That was wonderful. I, I was out there almost a week and one day here came my dad and he says, about time for you to come home, isn't it? <laughs> um, we did about, oh man, probably about 10 miles of trail um, that was kind of open to bikes, but I would say mostly a hiking trail. There's some really fun sections, actually. Um, I think it's just still really early in the season, so the last bit was just trudging bikes through snow for probably hours. I haven't even really thought about how long it took. Oh, you okay? Yeah, it's like really so many different feelings of like, I'm just so fucked up right now, like mentally and physically, but then I like lay down and like look around. And it's like, there's you know, nowhere else like I really would rather be. My decisions have kind of been made for me, and all I gotta do is like survive. Uh, and it's kind of very welcome. It's just like, is there a return to a less complicated lifestyle? Are there folks down there to help scoop? Oh, I think y'all should keep going. Ben and Preston, I talked to Preston, and he's like, they've both got good sleep gear. I think they want folks to go ahead and push on, be set up. Yeah, it was kind of slow going up there. Um, it was really beautiful though. We saw um, basically all the peaks in Washington with like panoramic views. So we could see, well, and some in Oregon. We saw Mount Hood, Mount Rainier, um, Mount Adams, St. Helens. So that was kind of the first trail we were on. So I think we were all in like super high spirits and then we kind of disappeared into the woods and it got really shady. Yeah, there was much snow. <laughs> I feel like we all thought our feet were so soaked already, and then we stepped through that, and we're like, "Oh no, they could they could get more yeah, soaked." Yeah, <laughs> turns out, hundred percent yeah. soaked. Yeah. Yeah. People were definitely really frustrated, but we were all like, "We just need to get through this and push forward." So we ended up getting separated into, I think, about three different groups. In each group, we were all kind of helping each other get through it. And I think it was only when I got to the camp that I realized like how frustrated and challenged everyone else in my group felt. Um, so I definitely hit a limit. We had to do some like off camper hike a bike in snow and like my shoes don't really get good traction at all. So I kind of, you know, in like probably hour eight of however long we were up there, just kind of freaked out in the dark. Forty-five miles in eight hours. Forty-five miles in eight hours. We left uh, Preston and Ben on the mountain. Yep, they told us to continue. I think they're gonna camp out, make some food, in there, and then come down in the morning. Get warm. Crash or anything? Preston, no. What? Is it Preston? Preston? 
Holy fucking shit. <laughs> After I moved back here and spent more time with my, my aunt, um, I asked her that same question. What's it, what's, what's it mean to be Indian? What, what? And she's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know anything about being Indian. Well, then I think back of all these things growing up that I learned from my mom and her sister that they didn't even realize were, you know, things, yeah, not necessarily just Indians do, but that's, you know, um, when white man came to the area, my ancestors showed them how to live, you know, live off the land here. Yeah, I think about like native lands a lot, I think just like in terms of what it means to be good stewards and what it means to like be in communion with the land. I think it's interesting to think of bikes as like an object between ourselves and the land we're on. And just, I think that's the thing that informs my buildings. Like, what do I want this thing that is connecting us to the land to look like? And what is it, what do I want it to feel like? I like want it to be beautiful, but I want it to like, facilitate that connection in a natural way. A lot of shadows, a lot of shade. Yeah, it keeps the stoke high, the anticipation, energy. I think, yeah, I think the more I've learned about native lands and like the stewardship that they have done that we have failed to do and like, how that's contributing to climate change and just be like, oh, we have so much to learn from folks who like whose populations we decimated. Like that, I don't know, I think that like magnitude of that is like hard to really take in. I think it just means having to be a little bit more intentional about like learning about the land and I don't know, ourselves. Trying to forge connections through these experiences. That's uh, called a uh, Rafa in-game, maybe. I'm sure it's never gonna be the same, y'all. Oh print. yeah, it's that's got a, the, there's the Jackson yeah. signature model. That's the uh, <laughs> custom, custom work trail side. When you are 
in the forest, on the water, on a kayak, on a bike, or hiking, whatever you're doing, don't just think of it as being there physically present, but be there emotionally and spiritually present. Stop for a moment. Look around. Look at the trees. Look at the ground. Listen to the water. Listen to the birds. Listen to the natural environment. And take it all in. Take a deep breath of air. That will uh, create a spiritual connection, an empathy, uh, an understanding. Think about the history of the land. It'll connect you. And I promise you, it'll be incredibly empowering. unreal because I've been doing, I've been planning this and looking at maps and writing little bits and pieces. It just feels surreal to have walked out my front door on Wednesday morning and now I'm here. It's just like a dream come true, which sounds corny, but like I put, I put so much work into this and like I'm so excited to share it with people terms of the writing and the intense, you know, ups and downs, emotionally, physically, topographically, you know, like you just, you never think you're going to find yourself climbing through the snow on a ridge line at 11 o'clock at night, crying as you, you know, <laughs> you pick your bike up. You know? thinking about how you'd rather be at home with your kid, you know, but those moments of like intense lows really bring into perspective this like intense high and I still have those low feelings if you're still in there, but I also have this euphoria right now and it's, it's just incredible and that's why I do it, you know, that's why I make these routes and ride them and why other people do it, you know, there's just no other way to feel this way. You know, my ancestors lived here for thousands of years and they're gone now. They're not gone from here because I remember them. And so I just ask that you be respectful of of the Mother Earth, be respectful to each other, be respectful to the land.